I get those goosebumps every time. I need the hymn. Throw that to the side. I get those goosebumps. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another video of mine. And today we'll be working on woodwork technology, chapter five. And the topic is common processes and woodwork joints. And this is part one of a three part series, okay? So the first thing we're gonna go through is the topics that we are gonna be going through. And uh, we're gonna do marking out, sawing, planing and i'll explain these in detail to you mitering chamfering trenching rebating housing and i think that's it yeah housing so we've got we'll be going to all eight of these and these might sound like foreign words to you but we'll go to them in, in detail okay and this chapter um, discusses how to use hand operated tools and the process by which um, by which you should use them or how you should use them okay and we're gonna go through three types of joints used for cabinet construction and you have your widening joint your angle joint and your fav framing joint okay all right so the first thing we're going to go through is marking out and marking out is pretty much self-explanatory because um, it's the, the process of locating or marking the correct positions of joints. Okay. So if you want to make a joint and you want your joint to be perfectly done, you need to mark it out properly. Okay. And in the illustration right here, if I can pull up the laser pointer, you it shows a piece of wood and this is the end result that you get to when you cut the two pieces of wood together and you join them okay so this piece is a cross piece okay and before you finish the cross piece you need to mark out right here um what measurement you want for them to cross over okay so here you see 125 millimeters below the same thing 125 millimeters and you're going to cut those two to get the same length um, for each board when you're cutting you want to make sure you have waste also so if you're cutting the blade actually cuts um, some of the board okay so if you're going to measure a 125 millimeter board you want to cut on the outside of the 125 meter millimeters not on the inside okay uh, below here, um, this is a framing square, and this is the marking gauge that you can use to mark your line. Okay, um, different things that we use is pencils. You can also use a pen, chalk, uh, marker, a knife. You can use anything to mark. Okay, whatever you have. So it depends on what you're doing. Also, okay. All right. Um, the next process that we're gonna go through is sawing and this might be familiar to you also and it is the process of cutting off a piece of board and when cutting along the grains of the board the process is termed as ripping so the grains are the lines in the board so if you're cutting along the grains of the board or with the grains of the board parallel um, it is called ripping. If you're cutting perpendicular to the grains or across the width of the board, it is known as cross cutting. So you have ripping and you have cross cutting. Okay. And here you see the different um, how to hold the saw. And you can hold it two different ways. If you are sawing forward, you can hold it this way. Or if you're sawing coming back to you, um, you can hold it this way. Um, when you are cutting the board, you want to wedge the board because you don't want to squeeze the blade. Um, wood is a funny piece of material. So if you start cutting here, the wood actually might squeeze 
the um the blade causing you to um get stuck so you want to wedge open the, the um the space that you just cut in order for it to cut easily okay and here it shows um ripping we are cutting with the grain and cross cutting we are cutting across the grain the grain is running this way and you're cutting across the grain okay all right next one is planing and planing is the process of using a plane as you can see right here this is a block plane and uh, taking off shavings from a piece of wood so what you're trying to do is smooth out the board basically you're trying to make it dress you're trying to dress the board because most of the boards that you get that are raw are really really rough so you want to make it as smooth as possible so it, so it looks nice you know so here you see the procedure um of how to dress your board or how to plane your board so i'll let you guys look through the different uh, procedures that you can do because it's a bit much okay and it shows you how to hold the handle um how to put the face to the um the board and that kind of thing okay how to hold the board against the bench stop and you need to make sure that the board that you are playing in it is um firmly secured you don't want a board moving all around the place okay uh <clears throat> another thing you need to make sure is that you press down the plane and the blade is in the right position if the blade is too far down uh, you will take off too much board if it if it is too far up into the block you won't cut anything okay you need to make sure that um you set your plane correctly um another thing you need to do is or not do is hold your plane at an angle it should always be level um to the board that you're cutting because if you put it angled you will end up with um all kinds of chippings that you don't want in your board so make sure you hold it at a level um plane all right um here you see another way you can do it vertically also um it doesn't have to be a flat piece of board also you can do the edge of a board and here you see the, the um the clamp is used to secure it and you always want to mark the side right here that you are planing because sometimes you can get confused and plane the wrong side so make sure you uh, mark marking is very important if you don't mark you will run into trouble so mark the face side however you want it and make sure that um you cut you plane the right side okay all right so the next thing we're gonna go through is mitering okay and mitering is basically producing an angle on your board okay so it is an angle we are an angle joint where the ends of two pieces forming the, the joint are cut at a 45 degree angle okay so when you hear somebody say you're cutting a mitre or a mitre saw a mitre saw actually makes um 45 degrees angles or if somebody says that they want that pat mitered or that joint mitered um just know that it is um 45 degrees all right uh that's pretty brief chamfering chamfering is making a groove on the corner of the board okay so and when you say a groove like an angled uh, plane then an angled plane and it, it is also 45 degrees so you're not actually cutting straight through the board you're making a 45 degree um chisel you're chiseling out or cutting out 45 degrees from your board itself okay and here you see the different examples and some can be smooth some can be rounded but it has to be at uh, 45 degrees from the top to the side of it okay all right so the next one and here it shows you um actually how to do it then it had an angle and at the corner it will be sharp initially but once you use the plane across it it will smooth out and then you can measure it 
using your adjustable um, square okay all right also you should also make sure your wood is straight and you use the a ruler or level or whatever you can do to make sure there's no spaces underneath okay all right so here you see a beveled edge and a splayed edge a beveled edge is an angle to your board that goes from the top to the bottom so whatever edge you have the angle has to go from the top to the bottom a splayed edge however it goes from the top and it doesn't go all the way to the bottom okay so it goes at an angle goes a certain way and then you finish it with a um, 90 degree piece to the top so the top and that little piece at the side is 90 degrees to each other so one is straight up and one is straight across okay and then you have the angle in between all right next one is trenching and trenching is the process of cutting a recess so you see when you're in the trenches you have a little gutter or a little gut in between so it's basically you're trying to cut out um, a gutter in between um, um, the wood okay in order to fit in another piece of wood okay so here you have the procedures and you can use different tools different um, materials different um, machines to cut grooves in your um, piece of wood okay and you can go through you can use also chisels you can hand make it and you can also use the bandsaw it depends on what material you have or what machine you have um, on site okay all right so grooving grooving is similar to trenching however um grooving is actually something that you don't go straight through the wood okay so you make a groove and then you stop okay so you're not actually going from end to end you're actually going into the wood making your groove and then you stop inside um, the edge of the wood also okay all right and here you see the procedures that you can use to um to get your groove all right rebating rebating is a procedure that they use for like cabinet making so let's say you have shelves and that kind of thing you can use a rebate to actually rest something on the um the piece of board and this helps to secure um like shelves if you have a shelf there you want to secure it um, on top so that it doesn't fall um fall down to the bottom or whatever okay so you want to make sure you have a rebate you also have a stopped rebate where you don't go all the way back so this is this is nothing like the um the groove or the trench the trench actually goes through but it's in the middle of the board this is actually at the end of the board and uh, this is a stopped rebate where it goes through but it doesn't um go right through to the to the board okay all right so you have a stopped rebate and a through rebate and this is the method of how to go through chiseling out or cutting out your um, rebate okay all right housing this is also used for making um shelves and housing is used to describe the fitting end of a piece of board into a trench okay so you're actually making a housing or a place for the board to fit into okay and as you can see here this is a through housing where the housing itself which is vertical um well the wood itself is vertical but the housing is horizontal and it goes right through the piece of wood right here okay um, you also have stopped housing where it stops at a certain way and then you just fit in your um, your shelving and the stopped housing means that the shelving can only go back so much or can only go forward so much okay all right so here you have the stop housing so it stops right here um, you have dovetail housing if you want to put a little bit of style on your shelves and you want a little dovetail to the front you can use um dovetail housing 
um, here you have a tapered bare face housing. So it's tapered meaning that it's at a slight angle, okay? So it's at a slight angle and at the front here, you won't even see the housing because once you put them together and push it forward, it would be like nothing happened right there, okay? So that's tapered bare face housing, housing. And right here, you see here, it's lower than the taper up here. So it's at a slight angle going up, okay? Over here, you have a packed dovetail housing. So you have the dovetail right here. And here is straight, so it's that's why they call it partial, partial dovetail housing. All right. Um, marking out, as we said before, this is an example of it. You use a pencil and make sure that everything is um, correct before you cut or chisel out anything. You don't want to cut or chisel anything, wasting the wood. Okay. All right. So once you've marked it out. Um, you can start chiseling out, chiseling out um, the waste that you don't need. And for the waste, you also want to mark where the waste is because you can make the mistake of chiseling the wrong side. So you want to make sure you mark where the, the waste is, okay? And carefully do it. Do not rush. If you rush, um, you will split the wood or break the wood or something, okay? All right, especially if it's um, like soft wood, okay? Hard wood is a little bit easier to work with. But software, you need to really take your time, okay? All right, so here you see different ways of how to chisel out. And uh, I'm sure you know this is the trenching right here. So you don't want to take off all of it. You don't want to start at the bottom right here. You want to start at the top, chisel pieces, chisel pieces, until you get to the, the depth that you need, okay? And right here, you see the finished um, housing right here, okay? Um, you can also use uh, machines to groove your pieces if you have the machine to do it. You can also use them and it makes the work a lot easier, okay, and faster. All right, that's the end of it. If you understood um, everything that was said here, um, click the like button. If you do not understand, leave a comment in the, um, the comment section. Subscribe if you are new to the channel. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.